Um, hello, good evening, viewers. Uh, today I had a live webinar, but uh, despite recording uh, the webinar, I could not uh, upload it on uh, YouTube because there was a lot of disturbance and participants who were continuously talking. So somehow uh, I didn't find that video good enough to be uploaded. So I'm re-recording uh, the same webinar with the same presentation. But before that, let me welcome you to my YouTube channel, which is Eloquent English Enterprise. And uh, I'm so happy to be back with all of you. And uh, believe you me, your comments and uh, whatever compliments you send me on phone uh, are uh, very, very encouraging. And I wish to thank you all for your support and your encouragement. So for today, this is uh, about activities that can be conducted in a class to enhance the language skills, both written and spoken. And uh, it's supposed to be a very short video, so I'll uh, just, uh, you know, go through it fast. And also, uh, it could be a repetition of activities which you must have been doing, you know, uh, in your class. But uh, nevertheless, uh, there's no harm in sharing it once again. Sometimes you do forget. So here I go. I'll share my screen quickly. So here we are. Just a moment. Preview. Standard view. Yes. Okay. So here we have uh, creating creative classrooms, that is uh, having classrooms which are uh, creative and uh, they enhance the uh, qualities or the abilities which students already have. So what exactly is a creative classroom? This is it. One sec, I'll go back. Okay, not willing to go back to the first slide. Anyhow, so uh, whenever we want our, uh, you know, uh, class to be more fruitful and we want children to learn things uh, which is permanent, so we have to have interactive learning. Now, what exactly is interactive learning? So interactive learning is an all-encompassing approach to education. Right. It, it involves a lot of capabilities, a lot of sensibilities of students, and it make, uh, makes learning more permanent. So uh, as English language teachers, we have to have exciting activities for middle and senior school classes. And this is the effort that I'm trying to put in over here. Basically, a language is to communicate. And we communicate in two ways. It's verbal and written. So communication skills are crucial, very, very crucial for success in both academics and your professional life for students. So to foster the development of spoken and written English language skills amongst our students, uh, there are a lot of activities which can play a pivotal role in enhancement of their language abilities. So this presentation, as I said earlier, is uh, basically aimed to showcase a variety of interesting activities which may be utilized to enhance the student's proficiency in both written and spoken communication. So the first on the list is story time. Okay, and uh, it's a misnomer. It's just a, a wrong notion that only young children, small children want to hear stories. I, at this age also, would love to hear anybody tell a story. So uh, story time is, or storytelling is a very good kind of activity to uh, enhance the sp spoken skills of your students. The objective is to improve verbal communication and enhance creativity. How do we go about it? We select a theme and uh, provide a prompt. That is, we start off, we set the ball rolling, and then we allow the students some time, we give them time to uh, prepare a short story. And uh, this also enhances their expression, their creativity and communication. And uh, towards the end of the storytelling session, we must include peer evaluation for constructive feedback. That is, let the 
friends also tell them constructively it should be positive criticism whether or not the story was good if it wasn't then what was there that can be improved upon the second activity is to have a debate not a long debate as we have in inter-school competitions some topic some common topic some popular kind of uh, theme can be given on which you can have your class divided into two they can select their own uh, side they want to speak for the motion or against the motion because ultimately the objective is to develop their critical thinking and persuasive communication skills like communication skills we all know but persuasive means to be able to persuade a person to believe in what you are trying to convey so as i said uh, you choose topics which are relevant to the student's interest or maybe some current affair and you divide the students and let them do it and also you can have a moderator if you want to be yourself you're most welcome uh, you can have a timekeeper you can have a score keeper uh, but yes score is usually kept by the teacher herself or himself because students may not be able to uh, give proper marks or points so uh, another thing which must be made very clear to them is to be very respectful and not use any word or expression which may be uh, disrespectful to the other competitor the third in the line is a spelling bee competition which is uh, something which uh, improves the spellings of students and uh, once they become confident as far as the spellings is concerned their vocabulary also increases right so the objective is to improve spelling and vocabulary and their public speaking skills so we conduct this competition with words which are appropriate to their age and stage it should be age appropriate and uh, you could have some fun and interactive rounds as well i mean you could ask the teams to ask uh, spellings of certain words also uh, you could give them some hint some words initially and then they can build upon that and definitely try to reward them for their efforts like whichever team wins or whoever as an individual does very well you can probably uh, you know do it okay so uh, yeah the next one we have language games fourth activity is to have language game now there is a variety of language games that can be played the objective being to reinforce language skills in an enjoyable manner something which does not tax them but it is something which makes them feel happy, confident, and uh, it relaxes them. So you could have word puzzles, you can have crossword competitions, and you can have language-based board games also. Like we have uh, uh, used to play, you know, uh, spellathon or something like that, or word building. So uh, in between, you could also have some vocabulary and grammar lessons. Uh, you can incorporate them as games so it should be competitive but it should be a supportive environment that is i mean it it is basically learning it's not to compete as such it is just a, a ground where you can support each other and learn more vocabulary words spelling expression everything the fifth activity is group discussions and uh, we know what group discussions are, but uh, usually we relate them with some uh, very high-end kind of competitive exams. But no, it can be conducted in our classes also, middle school and senior school. The objective, foster, foster collaboration, critical thinking, and articulation. Now, we must always remember that in the 21st century uh, educational technology, a lot of importance is given to creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and communication. So these activities, I'm sure you would be able to ascertain that they are based on these four Cs. How to go about a group discussion? Uh, firstly, you think of a topic which is thought-provoking. It could be something very relevant. It could be something uh, related to current affairs. It could be something related to their future. So you make small groups. You have groups of five to six children, and uh, they all are given different topics. And then um, one leader is to be appointed and uh, give them the freedom to appoint their leader. Uh, who listens to everyone and keeps jotting down points. And then when it's done, then the leader stands up and 
and reads out the inference, uh, whatever the group has decided. Uh, these roles of group leaders and uh, supporters can be interchanged. So along with this, you must also as a teacher emphasize on the fact to be an active listener. So uh, because if everybody starts speaking, who's going to listen? That's very important. So active listening is also as good as speaking. Then we have some more creative class activities. I'm trying to sum it up in as short as possible. So these are the ones, impromptu speeches, give them some small topic and let them speak for maybe uh, half a minute or uh, one minute. Uh, these impromptu uh, speeches, you know, uh, they make them confident of their thoughts. Like you could have uh, small little chits in a bowl and they come to you, to the teacher's desk, they pick up a slip and they start speaking immediately. There's no time to think. So this uh, in turn, you know, it helps in the enhancement of quick thinking, adaptability to a situation and also public speaking. So they become confident. Role-playing scenarios give them some uh, situation, some real life situation like, uh, uh, maybe a cafe or maybe a railway station, it could be the office, it could be a bank, and there you have some characters and they enact a real scene. So they not only learn to speak in a particular situation, but they also become confident speakers. They learn a lot of uh, different variety of roles to play when they grow up or when they go to such a situation, to such an office, right? Then we have radio broadcasting. You can ask them to, now, of course, uh, radios are not very popular, but still some children uh, want to listen to these radio jockeys and the, uh, the, the, this has become more popular today. So you could probably have a radio jockey, you know, uh, because they know more than I do. So a kind of radio broadcasting can be done and they sit behind a uh, curtain so that they cannot see the audience directly and then uh, there could be two or three of them and they can prepare a proper radio uh, function or program uh, for children especially it could be more education based it could again be something cultural it could be something related to uh, your city so anything anything at all and they try to complete it within 10 to 15 minutes. So what is going to happen? The result would be that uh, it, it's going to promote teamwork and it will make them do some research and also uh, they'll be more effective in their vocal delivery. Now we come to written communication activities. We've already spoken about the oral ones. So here we have some written communication activities. Uh, these are uh, pen pal exchange program. Uh, here, you know, uh, the teacher assists the children to uh, find out uh, pen friends. The objective being to enhance communication skills in the written form and also cultural awareness. So we find out pen pals for them. We find out pen friends for them from another school. We'll have to do a kind of a partnership program. And each student is assigned a pen friend. So certain guidelines are to be given to them. Uh, they have to be told to be uh, to be respectful to each other and uh, to emphasize on proper grammar and structure of letter writing. And uh, they can have frequent letter exchange sessions. And uh, this can be encouraged. Students can be encouraged to share their uh, experiences. Uh, then we have a creative writing workshop. The objective is to encourage imagination and to hone their writing skills. The procedure is to provide prompts or themes uh, and uh, any kind of letter, uh, you know, writing format can be given. It could be a short story, it could be a poem, it could be an essay, it could be an article, it could be a diary entry, just about anything, whichever you feel is relevant. Then you facilitate peer review sessions. I mean, let the friends reach, uh, uh, read each other's uh, writing or write up and you must try to celebrate this creativity and uniqueness amongst your students. And uh, once the written work is done, it can be put up on the class board for everyone to read and appreciate. Uh, 
Next two activities, one, the first one is a journaling prompt challenge. That is to make them into journalists. Like for example, you give them uh, a journaling prompt uh, which encourages their reflection on personal experience, current uh, events, or social issues. It could be, it, it's a kind of a report writing, a newspaper report writing. So this activity is going to promote introspection and self-expression along with informal and formal writing skills, right? The next one is to have a collaborating, uh, collaborative writing project. And what is this all about? Here we give them a uh, a writing project which they have to write together. We could have a group of four to five students and uh, they can create a class newspaper, they can have a group poem, they can have a collective story. So everybody pulls in their ideas and then they put, put those ideas into a proper writing format. So what's going to happen as a result is that there'll be uh, enhancement of teamwork, There'll be peer review. I mean, they will themselves review whatever has been written. And then uh, also there's going to be a very unique kind of synthesis of ideas. The next two, uh, persuasive letter writing. I spoke about uh, uh, pen pals, but that was an informal kind of a thing. So here in this persuasive, it's a little different. Uh, because this is to actually bring out a particular kind of uh, thought. Uh, so uh, students are assigned to write persuasive letters to advocate for a cause. It's not something very informal or a friendly kind of a thing. So they bring out a cause which they believe in, such as an environmental pr uh, protection problem, animal welfare, or educational reform. We see so many stray dogs and animals who are sick and people throw stones at them. So they could probably write to a veterinary hospital or to some animal welfare organization to come and take up certain uh, requ requisite steps. Uh, they could also write to maybe the board of education uh, if they want some reform. They could write to their uh, civil uh, civic uh, leaders or officials uh, in case they think that the environment is being endangered by some activity. So this is a formal kind of letter writing. So this activity is going to promote research skills, argumentation, and formal writing conventions. The next one is script writing and play performance. This is an entirely different kind of a writing genre. Uh, children uh, learn to write dialogues. I mean, story writing is one thing and to be able to write dialogues is something which is very different again. So, but of course the students have to be guided uh, in this process of script writing. And once the script is ready as per the requirement, a short play can be staged. So this kind of an activity is going to encourage creativity, collaboration and effective use of dialogue and stage. Other children who are stage conscious, they can be given other kind of responsibilities. They can, somebody can manage the stage, uh, which is, uh, you know, stage setting, props. Another one could be a prompter. Somebody could be the director. So a uh, lot of activities along with writing you can have, you can put to play. And some additional tips for enhancing communication skills. You must, as a teacher, provide regular feedback to your students so that they know they get to gauge their progress. Promote active listening because it's not just okay to be a good speaker. You have to listen to get more ideas. So once you listen patiently and uh, very, very in a conscious manner, you learn a lot. Uh, we must not just uh, be speakers. We must be active learn uh, listeners also then try to incorporate vocabulary building exercises uh, which is a must because the children's vocabulary must grow as they uh, proceed ahead in their classes also encourage your students to have diverse reading materials that is different genres they can have fiction they can have non-fiction uh, they could have detective stories, they could have probably just biographies and autobiographies, all this could be uh, suggested to them to read. And also, if they do something good, if they are good listeners, they're good speakers, they're good writers, you must celebrate their success. Try to encourage as much as possible. So this is the end of today's presentation. Thank you so much for watching this presentation. And I hope to get some good comments. Uh...
once uh, you go through this. And uh, so I come to an end uh, for today. Uh, I'll be back soon with uh, one more edition of uh, vocabulary building, uh, some difficult words starting with a particular letter. So till then, it's a goodbye from my side. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone. And see you soon.